So for God knows how long, there has been a custom that has grown out of the tradition of Christmas and Easter celebrations. And that custom basically is not very many people showing up to worship on the Sundays following those, those climactic days of worship in the Christian year. We call them low Sundays. Obviously, 2020 has totally flushed that custom since nobody has shown up to worship for the last six weeks. My expectations have lowered dramatically as I continue to preach in this empty sanctuary. In fact, I keep thinking about Denmark. Not to move there necessarily, but Denmark is on my mind because the people of Denmark have really low expectations. Over the last 30 years, the citizens of Denmark have scored higher than any other Western country on measures of life satisfaction because the country has a culture of low expectations. Whatever our lives look like before all of this, our pace of life has now come to a halt. And in case the last six weeks have not made it clear, we don't really have control of anything. The world is going to be and do what the world is going to be and do. No matter where you are or where you can't be, or who you're with or who you can't be with, the world is going to keep doing unpredictable things and constantly changing. The world is reminding us that we don't control it. We are guests here. And so a major lesson that I'm faced with these days of sheltering in place is to know my place. It is a place where much of my life is beyond my control. When times are good, we tend to think that, that we are navigating nicely and then have things managed well. That myth is shattered when trouble comes. And so, like yours, my place is filled with much unknown these days. And it has become a place of low expectations. It holds some similarities to the place I think the disciples were in amid the, the mayhem of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. The disciples were essentially sheltering in place because of all the trauma of the events of Holy Week that caused their world to come to a halt. In my limited knowledge on the subject, when trauma happens in our lives, parts of our brain actually shut down in order for us to survive. As a result, we're not able to fully process a lot of what is going on or around us, and so it is, it is normal to feel out of touch with our emotions and somewhat numb to things. Some people may be more apt to feel anxious, others more apt to feel depressed. Neither means anything other than indicating your predisposition of dealing with extreme stress. When you're in the midst of trauma, though, one of the most vital things you, that helps you simply to get by or to halfway function is to not only be kind to yourself, but to lower your expectations. The disciples are living in trauma. What they had just experienced a few days ago was one of the most traumatic experiences anyone could ever have. Not only what they witnessed with their rabbi and Lord, Jesus, but traumatic also because the same thing could happen to them. So it's not surprising that they locked themselves away in fear. The threat of being discovered by the very authorities who had orchestrated Jesus' execution felt way too real. Extreme fear, caused, ex extreme fear was caused by extreme trauma, and that will stop anyone in their tracks. And the last thing they are expecting is a living, breathing Jesus to walk through locked doors. What they are expecting is for the hell that Jesus went through to now become their hell. 
they are actually being somewhat kind to themselves by sheltering in place. And in the midst of their locked room of low expectations, they're also trying in some way to, to process the shame of all their failures. But parts of their brain most certainly have shut down. In the midst of all this mayhem, a risen Jesus finds them. He walks into a locked house full of trauma and greets them with peace. Shalom alakem, he says. Peace be upon you. He says it a second time. Shalom alakem. Peace be upon you. Then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Never had that common word, shalom, been filled with so much meaning or held so much weight as when Jesus uttered it, then breathed it that Easter evening to those shattered disciples sheltering in their own trauma and fear. There stood the risen Jesus as the full embodiment of shalom, wholeness, peace, harmony, restoration, breathing all sorts of resurrection on them, in them, and through them. Sure, Thomas doubted what, what the disciples told him later on, but let's be real. They all doubted at some point. When you are living in trauma, you doubt. And you probably don't expect a whole lot of good to happen let alone your deader-than-dead Lord suddenly being alive. And we remember how Jesus was very intentional about being in people's homes and sharing meals around tables with all sorts of nobodies or those people who had nobody. And so a locked home wouldn't keep him from still doing that. Jesus stands resurrected in their midst and says, Be at peace. Believe I am alive. And maybe lower your expectations because that will give my spirit more room to work through you to bring resurrection to the world. These days we are staying mostly at home behind locked doors. Not to hide like the disciples, but to protect ourselves and to protect others. The world came to a halt for the disciples when Jesus died. And the world has come to a halt for us. The world got dramatically different for them after they came face to face, breath to breath, with a risen Jesus. Whatever world existed before we hunkered down in our homes, it is already becoming different as we come face to face, breath to breath, with a risen Jesus in new ways. So maybe the most important thing we can do right now in the midst of our own trauma is to be kind to ourselves and to lower our expectations. Friends, may you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit behind your locked doors. May you give the peace of Christ to yourself and to others. And may you still expect God to be who God is going to be and to do what God is going to do. And that God will never let Easter be over. Maybe God in Christ is just getting started. 